in part three of our advanced features of processing with SQL where we look at the select statement um, this video is part of the information technology grade 12 cap syllabus now this video we're going to focus particularly on the dates and the date function so first of all we need to look at how do we use dates um, in SQL we're I mean, not talking about the dates you find in muffins we're talking about the dates like your birth date and stuff like that um, how do we use them in a query and then how do we use some functions that manipulate the date or get information from the date so let's just consider the databases that we are using for this uh, example we look at the CD database which has an owner table which has the details about the owner now this is our only table that has a date in it it's got the date of birth there right on the right, far right hand side of each owner so we are going to be focusing on the that that particular field and how do we do a query on it and how do we extract information from that date so let's look at our first date features and how do we use dates in queries so the first example we're going to look at or take note of is that whenever we use a date we need to use the hash around it not hashtag the actual word is a hash or you twitter people out there you i know you call that a hashtag but the actual term is a hash and we are going to place the hash around each side of the date so that's how sql will know that we're dealing with a date and not just a number that's been divided a few times so for example we're going to select from the owner table and we only want where the date of birth equals that particular date and so there you can see that we put hashes around it so let's go get a query we're going to go create a query design and we are going to close that and go straight to the sql part so we are going to select everything so we put the star from the owner table because that's the table that's got a date in it that we can use and we are going to put a where clause and we only want where the date of birth and that's the field name that has the date of birth is equal now I cannot do this slash 10 slash 02 it will not recognize it or it, should, it shouldn't work there we go there's no one with that 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 criteria but if we go to the SQL again and we put hashtags around it and I said the word hashtag because I've just joined Twitter so I should have said hash so there we go the hashes are around the date once we've got that and we run it there we go we can see that there is one person Peter Donovan there's our Peter Donovan that we always refer to he is born on the second of the tenth month which is October I think yes 1989 so that's his date so let's have a look at that SQL again. Let's go to the code. So we put the hash around the date. It's a good idea to look at what format date you, your database is using. Maybe they got the day first and then the month and then the year. That will obviously determine how you write your SQL query. Now we don't have to just use a query. We find a specific date. We can also look at the scenario where we have less than or greater than a date and we're going to look at those two scenarios in this case over here the bottom one we are looking at a date with that's within a range so between two different dates so let's look at those two situations where we use the less than and the greater than sign and then when we use a between so we remember our example where we had it equal to one date and it just was one result but if I change it to a greater than and let's just see what the greater than sign does if we run the greater than sign there we've got a whole series of dates and you'll notice that all of these dates are are after the date that we have specified so when we say greater than it means after that date it occurred after the second of the 10th 1989 so it actually is earlier than that date or later than that date. sorry later than that date if we use the other symbol the less than symbol and run it there we can see all the people that were born before that date so obviously the bigger the number so in other words we want greater than if it's a bigger the number that means it's the more recent number the smaller the number the, the further away that number that that date occurred so when we talk about the number we're talking about the date so the bigger the date the more recent it is the smaller the date the earlier it was so there we go so let's look at the other option where we want between a date so we're going to put the and 
and we also want date of birth now remember we have to speak on to say and less than a particular date because it won't know which field we're referring to so we want all the fields that are after 1989 so we want them to be bigger than 1989 but they must be less than which means before hash now let's say we want all those um before 1996 well, the date that's just before 1996 is actually, well, I'll put two hashes, 1995 slash 12 slash 31. Because that was the last date in 1995. Obviously, this doesn't include the dates because we don't have equal to signs. You can use the equal to signs. But there we go. Let's run it. So it must be after 1989, 10, 2, and before 1995, 12, 31. And there is our dates that are in that range. So nothing will be after 1995, and nothing will be before that 1989 date that we had there. What you could also do is you could also use a between. If you remember the previous videos, we used a between. So you could say date of birth between this date and that date, if you would like to use a between. So take note of that. You can use a between. Now those were the features or how do we use a date in a query. There are functions that you can also use on dates where you can get ex or extract data from a particular date. And the first one we're going to look at is the year function. The year function and in brackets you put a field which is of the top date format. So it's formatted as a date or it's been set as a date and it will extract just the year. So it'll extract a number that is that year. So in this example, we're actually taking the current year, which is 2014, and we're minusing the year of the date of birth. And we're setting that as a calculated field and we're going to call it age. And this is a good example why we don't have to store the age in the database because we can calculate it. So let's try it out. So here we have a query where we select the owner name, the contact details, and the date of birth. And this is all from the owner table. We're going to add a calculated field where we take the, the current year, which is 2014. If you watch this video in the future, then obviously it'll be a different year. But we're using 2014. And we're going to subtract the year of the date of birth. So we're going to use the year function. And the field that we're going to get the year from is the date of birth field. And if we run that, we should get some sort of age. Now, it doesn't say age. It says EXPR, 1013, blah, blah, blah. So just like the previous video, we must use an as to rename it. So I'm going to rename it as age. So there we go. The only problem with that calculation is it doesn't actually tell you the actual age. It just tells you what age that person will be turning in this year because it's very difficult to determine when they are turning because maybe their birthday was early in the year maybe it's, it's still to come so this is only calculating what their age will be in this year what what are they turning in this year so there you can see their ages by using a calculated field just to show you that it is working i'm going to take the 2014 out so you can see that it's getting the correct year so if we just run that as you can see 1990, 1990, 1989, 1989. And just like we've got a year function, you've guessed it, you probably also get a month function, which will extract just the month, and you get a day function, which extracts just the day. So let's just apply that to our current situation. So yeah, I've just modified that query. You still got the owner name, the contact details, and the date of birth. But I've used the year function to get the year, which is as birth here and I'm going to use the month function on the date of birth and that I'm going to say or label as birth month so that's a whole new calculated field and then I'll put a comma to put another one which will be day on the date of birth which will will say is the birthday oh, it's your birthday so there we go. So that we've got that f function which extracts the year from the date of birth and puts and labels it birth here. We've got the month function on the date of birth which we say or we label as the birth month and then we've got the day function which is labeled as the birthday. And there we go. So 1990 323 there you can see by checking with the date of birth it does extract everything for you. 
So now we could do queries, for example, if we want only the people who, so if we have it in a query, we can say where, and we can refer to birth month. And if we want to find only the people that were born in the first half of the year, then obviously birth month must be less than or equal to 6, because then obviously their month must be 1 to 6. So that's how you can now do a query saying birth month, which is just the month of the date of birth, is less than or equal to 6. Oh, and it's giving me an error there. I don't know why it's giving me an error. Let me see what, if I spelled something incorrect. Oh yes, I remember now, we can't actually use these calculator fields over here in the calculation for where. We actually need to use the calculation. So we're going to say month of date of birth. See, even I, I had to make a mistake sometime. But I don't make many, just a few. So there we go. So where the month of the date of birth is less than 6. So you can't refer to just the fields names that we just changed. You've got to refer to the calculation is less than or equal to 6. Let's see if that works. There we go. So you'll notice here we are only viewing those that were born in the first half of the year. Because of our calculation. And where we put a criteria on that calculation. And the last date function that we're going to show you today is the actual date function, which if you say date and just open bracket square and uh, close bracket, then it will return whatever today's date is. So that is a quite useful if you want to get the current date of today in the database. So let's add it to this query. We're just going to say date, open bracket, or oh, it's not even typing. Let me type in here. Date, open bracket, close bracket. I'm going to say that as today. Now I'm just going to repeat the day's, today's date. So if I run it, there we can see I'm recording this video on the 10th of August 2014. Now if we use this function combined with the, the year function, what we could do, if you remember correctly, we did the age like this. 2014 minus the year of the date of birth, if you remember previously. And that was the age. Now the problem with that calculation, that calculation will only work for this year. When, when I run this query next year, it will give me incorrect data. So what I could do, instead of saying 2014, I could get, use the date function of today's date. But that returns a whole date. I just want to get the year of that date. So I use the year function on top of the date. So get today's date and extract just the year. And then get the d year from the date of birth and you minus the two. Now that should give me the same results as I did earlier because obviously the year hasn't changed. It hasn't taken me that long to make this video. But if I had to open this query now next year, it would give me the correct data. The, the age will change correctly. So to recap, when you are using dates in your criteria, remember you need to put hashes around the numbers, the full date, sorry. So the, the full date, you put a hash around it so you can use it in a calculation. And you must remember these date functions where you can extract just the year, the month, the day of a date field, as well as get the current date. I hope you are finding these videos useful. You can go to the following website or the, the YouTube channel to find more videos on the advanced SQL and basic SQL and other Delphi stuff that can help you with your exams or whatever you're trying to find out. And leave comments. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, follow us on Twitter and you can keep up to date whenever we release new videos. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way. The examples from today's video come from the Grade 12 Delphi eNotes provided by Study Opportunities. These are available in 2014. In 2015, a textbook will be released where you can get the entire Grade 12 CAP syllabus for IT. If your teacher is interested in these textbooks, you can contact the Study Opportunities company at their website.